from Nashville, Tennessee. This is the day the Lord has made. Join us for the next 30 minutes as we share the gospel ministry of Dale and Jerry Robbins. Thank you for helping us to keep making these video presentations. Make your donation online at victorious.org forward slash donate 
Once again, that's victorious.org forward slash donate. Thanks again for your faithfulness. May God richly bless you. When I was a kid, fall was always my favorite time of the year, and actually still is. I love the cooler temperatures, the turning of the leaves, the football games, and I especially enjoyed the October hay rides, parties, and weenie roasts associated with Halloween, which was my favorite annual event. And Halloween night was always such fun, a fun adventure for kids to dress up in some costume and go out trick-or-treating. Well, maybe also engaging in a little mischief here and there, <laughs> like soaping windows or throwing toilet paper rolls up into the trees of nearby homes. Uh, did you do any of that? <laughs> I did. But even though it was always associated with spooky things and traditions, I never gave serious thought to any of that or, or any association to evil or the occult, that kind of stuff, because I thought it was all just tongue-in-cheek fun and games, thinking that witches, ghosts, goblins were all just make-believe. However, when I got into high school, I had an encounter that gave me a slightly different perspective about all this. A friend invited me over to his house for a party just before Halloween. Besides the many typical party activities, someone pulled out a box with a game board inside that I'd never seen before. When I asked what it was, he said it was what they called a Ouija board. He said it was a lot of fun to play and that it could actually tell someone's future. Well, I just chuckled, thinking it was a, a part of the spooky fun of Halloween, like sitting around telling uh, fictional ghost stories. But he insisted that he was serious, that it really could tell the future. In fact, he said that his mom, whom we all knew was a successful business owner in our community, used it to help run her business. Whoa! Now I was sure he, he had to be pulling my leg. I'd never heard of anything like this. But a little later, his mom popped out of the kitchen to say hi to all of us teens, and seeing that the Ouija board was set up on the coffee table, asked if we'd like to see a demonstration. <laughs> well, we were, we were all fascinating, fascinated, but it was also a little weird, as she claimed that she could communicate with a spirit of some sort through the board. She claimed that the spirit would talk to her and tell her the future and help make her uh, business decisions. Well, up to this point, I, all, I thought it was just a joke, just Halloween silliness, but this mother was dead serious, and so were her kids. The Ouija appeared to be a flat board, a game board marked with the words yes, no, along with the letters of the alphabet and the numbers 0 through 9. The objective, as she explained it, was for at least two persons to touch the Ouija planchette, a pointer on the board, lightly with one hand or, or finger, and then after asking the spirit a question, to allow the pointer to move freely across the board, to point to either yes, no, or to letters or numbers to spell out an answer. Well, many of us were clearly skeptical. I, I didn't think any of this was real. But as each paired with a partner and tried it, we were quite shocked by how it seemed to work. As my hand lightly touched the planchette, the pointer, I felt it gently move toward letters and it actually spelled out the actual words of an answer. <laughs> I thought my partner's hand had to be moving it. That wasn't me, that, that was you. But he denied it, and he said he thought it was actually me the one moving it. Well, it was pretty spooky. Neither of us were moving the pointer, but it definitely moved and spelled out uh, uh, intelligible words. And then the mother sat down with her partner and it would move around swiftly on the board, almost by itself, spelling out answers as she would ask it questions real quickly and rapidly. Well, needless to say, 
I, I was pretty freaked out, and so were a lot of other kids. This prominent woman, uh, this wealthy woman, was actually running her well-known business in our community with the help of a Ouija board. I had never dabbled with one of these again, but came away realizing what was considered a fun game to some was something pretty serious to others, uh, at least uh, taken seriously by many, and it seemed to be connected to something very dark, mysterious, and spiritual that I didn't want any part of. I later learned that the Ouija board is not just a game, but it's considered an actual occult device used in the practice of divination, fortune-telling, or witchcraft, things strictly forbidden by God's Word in the Bible. It says there, there shall not be found any, among any of you who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire or one who practices witchcraft, or the, as the King James says, divination, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who cap conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritualist, or one who calls up the dead, for all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out before you. Deuteronomy 18, verses 10 through 12. So why are these things an abomination? Because they come from the devil, from Satan himself. And one's participation in these things will bring an association with him that God doesn't want for any of us who follow him. We either follow the Lord or, or the enemy. And... Uh, you can't be friends with the devil and be friends with God. Years ago, I did a study about the origin of Halloween and, and learned that the Ouija board was, um, as well as many other dark Halloween customs, often used as a gateway toward actual occult practices. Most children and adults are unlikely to ever take it that far any more than, than I did or other teens in this uh, party. But there will be some, just like the businesswoman I described and her kids, who will. And even for those who don't, many Halloween traditions tend to do something else. Something that is a pretty serious matter and becomes an issue for, for Bible-believing Christians. It tends to trivialize the forces of evil and darkness as mere folklore, fun, or games, when they are in fact very real. Very real forces and spiritual uh, principalities and powers which Christians must be wary of rather than making light of. Believers who have Jesus in their heart need not be afraid of the devil, but they need to have a firm understanding and respect for his evil power of death, destruction, and wickedness that he can cause as our enemy. This is why the Apostle Peter said, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. 1 Peter 5 and verse 8. So, where in the world did Halloween come from anyway? Well, it's believed it came to America through the early European settlers, many who embraced its lighter traditions, such as kids wearing costumes, going trick-or-treating, or displaying jack-o'-lanterns carved out of pumpkins. But many also brought its darker history and traditions associated with ancient pagan beliefs, Satanism, and the occult dating as far back as before Christianity. Halloween was originated by a satanic order of Celtic priests called Druids. These wicked tyrants ruled over the spiritual and legal affairs of people and were known for their savagery, their, their, their brutality, and frequent human sacrifices to their gods. Sacrifices of men, women, and children. <laughs> Each year they held a pagan festival of darkness, fire, and death on the evening before their new year in honor of their god of death called Samhain. The festival of Samhain or what became known as Halloween on October 31st, is revered today as the most sacred festival of pagan worshipers, Satanists, and those who practice sorcery or witchcraft. 
witches claim it to be their most important celebration when they can most effectively communicate with dead spirits, which are in reality demon spirits. What, what, what they think are spirits of the dead are uh, demons, devils, which they are in communication with. And so how about uh, the costumes and trick-or-treating? Where did that come from? Well, Irene Park, a former witch and authority on the history of Halloween, she said the Druids in Ireland would go through the neighborhoods and countryside on the eve of October 31st to collect offerings for Satan. They would carry lanterns, bags for money, and, and canes with very sharp points on their ends, uh, known as leprechaun staffs, good luck horns, or fairies' wands. And at each house, they would demand a specified offering or an amount, and if the household would not or could not give the offering, which was considered a, a, considered a, a penance or a treat, the druid would use his cane to castrate the male human or one of their prize animals. And so they went from house to house, singing and dancing, wearing blood-curdling masks and grotesque costumes that may have been meant to keep evil at bay or maybe more likely were a visible representation of the ghosts and goblins that they believed lurked in the night. Well, what, what should we think about all this as Christians? Uh, how should Christians view Halloween? Well, first of all, as I have, I've said, most adults and children who participate in Halloween do so innocently without any attention, intention of associating themselves with the occult or demons or other satanic practices. And please don't get the idea that I'm bringing judgment against uh, any uh, that are involved with this or practicing this. That's not my point here today. But, uh, but let me share what changed my personal views and convictions and why I can't look at it the same anymore like I did in the past. During our early years of ministry, Jerry and I were invited to attend a gospel meeting held by a visiting evangelist friend in a nearby hotel conference center. We looked forward to visiting with him after the service. We were going to wait around, talk with him, and fellowship a bit, but things took a pretty strange turn in the service that none of us could have anticipated. During the service, as we were sitting there, a young woman came in and sat directly behind us. And I began noticing unusual sounds and reactions from her as the evangelist was speaking and preaching. She would occasionally tremble and emit strange noises as though she might be on the verge of, of an epileptic seizure. And I, I began to be worried about her, what was going on. But then I began to notice a pattern that her reactions occurred whenever the preacher would, would speak or preach the name of Jesus. He would say, in Jesus' name, or talk about Jesus, and, and she would react and tremble. The noises and reactions kept building until she finally erupted screaming and thrashing about violently on the floor. The meeting stopped temporarily, and I thought the police were going to be called, but a, a couple rushed over to help her, and I could see that she was responding to whatever they were, were saying or doing. As I listened in, they were praying and telling the girl or something in the girl to come out in the name of Jesus which I didn't understand until I heard her respond with, a, with an ugly voice cursing and spitting at the couple in a growling tone saying, I will not come out in the name of Satan. Well, this was a mind blower, I can assure you. I was just an innocent bystander here watching and observing all this. This was the first time for my wife and I to ever witness anything like this. Someone who actually had demons and who was responding to the prayers and commands of a Christian couple who I found out were actually ministers in the service. Um, they were attempting to cast these demon spirits out and the spiritual struggle continued on for some time as other Christians joined in praying for the girl including the evangelist who came down and joined also with Jerry and I, who were praying too. At one point, the demons inside the girl 
uh, looked up at me through her eyes, spoke directly at me, cursed me, and threatened me, which blew me away. I was pretty shocked. The good news is, the girl was delivered from the demons after a time. It was quite a struggle and a battle for a time, uh, praying for her with thrashing and screaming and all this. But she was delivered. And, and she completely changed her demeanor to a soft-spoken, humble young woman. She broke down in tears, confessed her sins, and accepted Jesus as her Savior and began sharing and answering questions about her life. Her name was Julie and had been a member of a cult of Satan worshipers in the area and, and came by uh, this meeting really by accident. After the meeting, the evangelist kept in touch with her and confirmed that she kept living for the Lord. It was not only amazing to have witnessed her deliverance from demons, but also to participate in it and would be the first of many other similar encounters with demons and deliverance that Jerry and I would deal with in the coming years as young ministers, young pastors. However, the next time October 31st rolled around, something had changed in me. I could no longer view Halloween and its traditions the same way as I did before. While I realize that most people look at such traditions innocently, it was no longer possible to remain indifferent while people dressed up like devils and witches when I have actually encountered the real thing. Nor is it possible for me to see evil and darkness to be trivialized as though Satan is just a mythical character or only a benign cartoon character of some sort with a pitchfork. Now, I, I still enjoy this, the fall harvest festivities like the hayrides, the bonfires, weenie roasts, and all that, which we have often hosted from the churches we've pastored. But I, I distance myself from Halloween simply because I know that there is a real devil and real demons behind its traditions, which Christians need to understand and remain vigilant against. As the Bible says, carefully determine what pleases the Lord, take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness, instead expose them. Ephesians chapter 5, 10 through 11. Keep in mind the biggest problem in the world isn't Halloween or cute little trick-or-treaters who come to your door, but there is a problem for those who are ignorant of Satan's widespread deceptions and influence. Paul warned believers to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or deceptions of the devil, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, he says, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 13. Praise God. Right now in America, we are dealing with an epidemic of Satan's evil unlike ever before. Murder is rampant in most of our cities. Crime is out of control. Pornography has saturated computers and TVs with filth. Millions of people think that killing unborn babies is an acceptable form of contraception, while young people have become convinced that they need to change their sex in order to be happy. At the same time, most of our schools and colleges deny the existence of evil, and even many churches refuse to acknowledge the existence of a real devil. Millions have become victims of his evil addictions, deceptions, and oppressions, unaware that Jesus paid the price on the cross to bring deliverance from Satan's evil grasp. The Bible says, for this purpose, praise God, the Son of God was manifested that He might destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3 and verse 8. So I'm not here today to lift up the devil. I'm not here to condemn those who uh, may participate in innocent Halloween festivities. But I'm here to expose Satan's reality and the fact that Jesus came to set us free from his bondages as He said, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. John 8 
and verse 36. The Bible says, for those of you that have Jesus in your heart, he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. 1 John 4, verses 3 through 4. You don't have to fear the devil, but you do have to stand up against him, and you do have to stand your ground, and you do have to use the name of Jesus to tell him to get in his place from time to time, just as Jesus, when he was tempted and tried, he said, devil, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And he quoted the word of God and defended himself and put the devil in his place. And just like he turned around at one point and said to Peter, who was inspired at that point, uh, by the devil at that point, Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. There are times, dear friends, that we're going to have to exercise authority over the devil. And... There are those in our society, those in our family, friends, loved ones who are bound by the devil. And I don't know of anyone else who can do it for them, except you and I who believe in God, that we've got to pray for them and pray that God will deliver them and stand on God's word that they would be set free. Just as I was set free decades ago from many of these addictions and things in the world that Satan bound me with. And I'm thankful today that Jesus set me free just like he can set you, your friends and your loved ones free. I want us to pray today for that very thing. And I want to pray that we would lift up Jesus Christ at this time of the year and bring glory and honor to him and honor him with our lives and the way we live. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you and praise you that Jesus is Lord today and greater is he that is in me, that Jesus who is in me, than he that is in the world, that is the devil, who is in this world causing havoc, causing uh, uh, trauma, causing hurt and destruction. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come against Satan that is trying to destroy our families, our friends, our loved ones, our husbands, our wives. In the name of Jesus, set them free today. Be free in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over their lives and over our lives. Lord, surround us with a hedge of protection and keep us filled with your spirit and God's word that we will stand strong against the onslaught of the devil. We thank you and praise you for this in Jesus' name. And if you don't know Jesus, go to the address on your screen and, and read and contact us there. We'd be glad to pray for you. We love you today and we're so honored to come your way and we hope that you'll join us next time. Same place. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. For more information, please visit our website at victorious.org. Until next time, God bless you.